think what we've been learning week by week is the lesson that it is a gift to be able to gather like this. And I'm just so grateful for the opportunity for us to be in this room together to celebrate and remember our Savior's death. And uh, it's good to see some of you that we haven't seen, you know, who have been able to join us in person and you've come today. We honor that today. We just are so grateful. It's like it's seeing family after being away from family for a long time, just that embrace that to have you here today. And as well for those watching online, uh, we, we just will honor that commitment because we know it's not easy, you know, to sit in front of a screen and to watch it feels like, you know, it's not you're not there and completely, but you're there with us in spirit today. So we want to honor that today and recognize uh, you just being with us online. Um, but I have the privilege just to share with you just for a few minutes, um, just a short message on this Good Friday. And I want to begin by reading Romans chapter 5, 6 to 8. For while we were still weak, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. For one will scarcely die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person one would dare even to die. But God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. What does Good Friday mean to you? According to Wikipedia, Good Friday is defined as the day where Christians all around the world commemorate the crucifixion of Jesus and his death at Calvary. And well, yet, it means Good Friday is that, the day we remember Christ died. But what the world does not get is that Good Friday is so much more than just a day when we remember that Christ died. Today is the day we remember that Christ died for us, that he died for me, he died for you. And we pray and we never give up hope that one day they too might know that God who is for us is the God who is also for them. The meaning of Christ's death, the meaning of Good Friday is that forever and always God is for us. God is for us. Yet when not kept carefully, God for us can get real sloppy real quick, can it? You know, throughout history, many acts of injustice have been committed in the name of God being for me. It's so easy to believe that since God is for me, God will always be on my side. God will always do what I want to do. God wants for me what I want for me. And we can easily forget that it is God who created us in his image rather than we who created God. That it is not God who must be conformed to our image, rather it is we who need to be transformed into his. His image is what we have been created to have, to bear, to reflect. Male and female, he created us in his image. Yet the story that we all share is that we all believe the lie that we could earn or we could control or we could change what God freely had given us. We exchanged his truth for a lie and as a result, sin entered the world and sin entered my world and your world. You name it, sin affected it. God could have started over. He could have wiped away the slate clean. He could have just done away with us altogether. Instead, when we were the farthest things from being image bearers of a good and loving creator, instead of destroying us, God died for us so that we could live as co-heirs with Christ, who is the true image, the very face of God. God for you does not mean that God condones your sin. God for us does not mean that God excuses our sin. Rather, God for you and I means that God has done in Christ what we could never do. That is, he has atoned for our sin, he has forgiven our sin, and he has set us free from the power of sin. And so light of what Christ has done, I ask again, what does Good Friday mean to you? There are some who unfortunately, when it comes to Good Friday, when it comes to the cross, the cross doesn't really mean nothing at all. Like this picture up on the screen. It, the cross is more of an outline of life. The colors have faded. It is more blended into the background. Christ may have died, but I fail to recognize the significance and relevance of Christ dying for me today. For others, it might mean this. The cross may be one 
time was very large, it was very significant in your life, but over time, maybe circumstances, maybe things happened, maybe, maybe beliefs came in that you, you started to disbelieve, maybe you started to doubt, and over time the cross shrunk smaller and smaller and smaller in proportion to the other things in your life getting bigger and bigger and bigger. But here's what Good Friday should mean to this, to mean to us today. The cross should take up the entire picture of our life. And everything that happens, everything that we see, everything we do, our relationships, our life, our work, our everything should be filtered through the cross. The cross that calls us today to respond to everything with love. What does Good Friday mean? Yes, it means Christ has died for us. Today is the day when we should look lovingly and, and look lovingly and longingly at the gift of Christ Jesus alone purchased. He has made the gift of salvation, purchased by his blood, readily available for all who believe in their heart and confess with their mouth that only by his stripes we can be healed. God for us means he has saved us. But the meaning of Good Friday is that the cross, that our salvation is not the finish line of our story, rather it is the starting line. While today we remember the death of Christ, we gather together to remember a second death, and that is our own. Galatians 2.20 says, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. If Christ has not only died, but died for me, then I must do the same. I must pick up my cross and follow him. I don't find my life by allowing the pleasures of the world to live in me. No, I save my life. I find my life by dying to my sin and living for righteousness. So what does the cross mean for us today? Is the cross central to your story? Do you believe that God is for you no matter what you've done, no matter what mistakes you have made? Do you believe that Christ not just only died, but he died for you? And finally, will you count it all as loss for the sake of knowing Christ today? If so, I just want to invite you to pray with me. Maybe you've never prayed this prayer before. Maybe you've prayed this times many times before. But right now, we just want to stop and we want to pray and we just want to invite the saving grace of God to come once again. Father God, we just look upon the most wonderful act of love this world has ever known. That is, while we were sinners, Christ died for us. You gave your very life for us. You took the penalty upon yourself, the penalty we deserve, the penalty that was owed to us. You made a way when there was no way. You laid down your life so that we could be set free, so that we could come stand in, in the presence of a holy God, so that we could live with you for forever, so that we could be made whole, so we could reflect the very image of God that we were created to reflect. God, you've done all of this in Jesus Christ. And so today, we say thank you. And God, we just once again invite the grace of God to wash us clean. Oh, maybe we wash clean. Lord, I pray if this is the first time somebody has prayed that they would pray, oh God, would you forgive me today? Would you wash my sins away? Make me white as snow. God, we look upon the cross today. And we see your love, your love revealed in Jesus Christ. We thank you for the cross. We thank you today. In your name we pray. Amen.